Actually, this is the uh, second project that United Power has done in the last year. Uh, we started a renewable project. It was, uh, it was a landfill generation project, a three megawatt one in Erie. Uh, this one is a two megawatt solar farm that we've uh, produced. It was, it was basically about a year and a half in the making. Um, there was a lot of work to do with permitting and, and land issues and, and things like that that we needed to get through. But uh, once construction started, uh, miraculously, it was uh, basically a two-month project from uh, dirt clods to electrons. It was a great fit uh, for the uh, for uh, for United Power and our membership. Um, we uh, firmly believe in not only renewables but a diversified load. It came to us, uh, you know, with an offer, and we worked a very long time to trying to get this accomplished and put onto the uh, onto the system. It's a real significant uh, project in that it's a fairly robust size for electric co-op to to have uh, you know intermingled in our in our right in the middle of our uh, service territory and uh, it's it's unique in that it's two megawatts and that's pretty pretty good size for uh, a cooperative those that can't afford to have solar on their rooftops or can't afford to buy a thousand dollar panel at soul partners or our solar garden can at least feel good that there is some solar power that's not coming from two or three hundred miles away, it's coming from two or three miles away. This particular piece of land is uh, kind of a triangle piece of land between Colorado Boulevard and the railroad tracks. And there really was not much that you could do from a development point of view. And so it really made sense to put a solar farm on it. Any remnant properties that would not have a great deal of commercial value would be ideal for these type of projects. We used them for substation sites, but great place for, you know, Hangar 160 and that, that lot probably would not have been used for anything else. And basically what they're doing is running a string line that is two feet off of the ground and then to accurately drive the post in as far as we need them, they mark from the top of the post two feet down and uh, then as soon as that mark reaches the string, we have our four feet above, uh, above ground. I mean, at first it always, you know, feels like it starts out kind of slow, you know, because we had 1,471 piles that had to be driven. And we had our share of problems initially with just like mechanical breakdowns. So we were, felt like we were dragging and then before we knew it, you know, we're down here and we're almost done with those and we started putting the tables on and then you just follow one step after the other and it just started snowballing and got done pretty quick actually. Actually, what amazed me a lot was working with the contractors we worked with. I mean, everyone we brought in, HT Solar, e Light, Atlet, they were all very professional. And their subs were very professional, and they were able to get it in and get it done, you know, in our time frame. They were very, so that was key. You know, the trenches aren't just random. You have to do it according to the National Electric Code. So they were five feet wide to accommodate all the cables, you know, we talked about the distance between. And just to be on the safe side, we dug down 36 inches because uh, we're, we're actually doing a ungrounded 1,000 volt system as opposed to just a regular 600 volt system that's uh, you know, grounded on the negative. Well, everyone sees the fence and sees the modules and the racking going up, but that's only about 70%, right? The other 30% is all the stuff that's under the ground and the stuff you do on the side that really doesn't get noticed. Well, basically we have 7,600 modules. If you think of it as like a large funnel, uh, all those have to be wired together, you know, in a series configurations of 19 in a row. And then all of those strings go into combiner boxes and we have 20 of those. And there's 20 strings in each combiner box. All those combiner boxes go back to the inverter. All that DC gets narrowed down into that building and then it comes out in uh, 
three phase AC power. The building itself is, it houses two inverters. So everything is located inside. Uh, all our communications are gonna be inside. So they had to have that uh, an indoor structure. The weather was huge for this project. The fact that it stayed sunny and warm, no snow, we hard to, I don't think we had any rain really to speak of. So that was, that really kept it going. Most large solar fields are either connected to the high voltage transmission lines are, and out in some remote location far from where the actual energy is used or these large solar farms are actually connected to the large loads that they serve. We uh, see that at the uh, DIA and some of the colleges and stuff like that. So uh, the energy that's produced there, it goes about 100 feet and it's used. This is unique because the energy is being put onto the distribution lines at a uh, lower voltage and it actually goes onto the grid and travels down that line and serves the homes that are in this general area. Hopefully it's a second or third step in a, in a growing renewable program here at United Power. You know, we will measure it with economics first. And then obviously there's uh, state statutes that, that you know, dictate uh, what uh, we need to do in, in these regards, but those statutes change over time. Uh, and what wouldn't change here is the uh, contractual price we're paying for the power that makes sense for us, you know, to in turn resell it to our customer members in that area. It works. So it's a great resource for us. I hope we can find a way to do many more of these.